What's up guys and welcome back to Trent's Garage. Today, we are gonna do our best to get the motor completely out of this truck. Off the frame, on the cherry picker, ready to be disassembled. I probably haven't really uh, talked about this because I think I've probably made this decision recently, but first I wasn't gonna pull the motor. And then I was convinced that I needed to pull the motor. And now I'm gonna pull the motor and I'm most likely gonna be supercharging this motor when I put it all back in. So I think while I've got it out, I'm gonna tear it down and rebuild it. Why not? <laughs> All right, so we are gonna start by pulling the motor as soon as we get done assembling these tires. So I have these Raceline bead locks and I have these 42 inch trepidors. And honestly, the two of them being separate is just taking up too much room in the shop. So I'm gonna go ahead and assemble them as full bead locks. And then once we're done assembling all five of those tires, we're gonna move on to the truck. And like I said, we're gonna do our best to get it completely disconnected and pulled out of the truck today. All right, so I've got some Dawn dish soap and some water here at a tire shop. You have like this sticky goo that like lubricates the bead and then kind of glues it to the tire that like actually helps hold the bead on. We don't have that here. So we're using some dish soap and some water and basically just getting a nice slippery surface here on the actual tire, something that's gonna like dissipate over time, but will allow the tire to slide down onto the rim a little more easily than without it. a little more effort than I was wanting. Those beads are gonna be really tight on there, but we got the back bead over the top of the rim now. All we have to do is put the ring on top of here. I'm gonna use some compressed air to blow out any sand or dirt or anything that might be in the threads. Then we're gonna put some anti-seize on these bolts and start tightening them down. Pretty sure this is the right anti-seize. I think the silver stuff is the stuff that goes on aluminum and steel, but I'm not exactly 100% sure. So I've got my anti-seize on every single bolt. I've got every bolt threaded in there. Now I'm gonna start doing a star pattern and starting to basically like suck these down in succession until the ring is completely clamped and the tire is nice and centered. And hopefully this works out okay. So I've got my trusty little inch pounds or pound inches torque wrench here and I'm tightening these down to about 200, 210 inch pounds. That's basically what the manufacturer recommends. I'm gonna go around two times and make sure that all of them are at spec and not tighten them over or under and then we'll be able to air this thing up. Got all of the bolts torqued down now. I'm ready to start filling up this tire now. Usually you have to do weird things to manipulate the lower bead, the, the seal on this side of the rim. This side is clamped by the ring, so no air is going to escape there. But the other side, if it's not pushed all the way up against the rim, a lot of times when you try to fill the tire up, the air will just leak out that side of the tire and the tire will not air up and seat that back bead. So I'm gonna see if we're lucky and I can just throw the air on there and see if it actually starts inflating and seats that back bead. Sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. So we're gonna see what we got here. I'm gonna try and connect this onto the valve stem and start filling her up. Definitely not working. There's a handful of things you can do here. Um, a lot of times people will take like a different tire or a different rim, or I'm gonna try and use one of these rimmed boxes and see if I can set the tire on top of that so that it has some pressure and I can push down on the tire on the outside, see if I can seat that back bead. The least amount of manhandling and manipulation I have to do with these big, heavy rim and tire combos, the better. So hopefully I can just set it on top of this box and that'll be good. Ugh. Yeah, she's sticking way out of there. Alright, here we go. 
Don't recommend doing this. Sounds like it's sealing. But the reason I'm standing here is because the box is supporting the rim. So by standing on the outsides of the tire, it's forcing the tire down around the rim, which is putting pressure on that back bead, which is starting to fill up the tire. Once the pressure gets great enough, that back bead is gonna slap against the back of the rim. And then you know it's seated, and you can air up to whatever PSI you want, or air down to whatever PSI you want. And hopefully your tire is not coming off the rim. All right, so as you can see here, I don't really want to touch it, but you can see that the edge of the tire right there is sticking past the rim, and then over here, the edge of the tire is underneath the rim. So what's going to happen is as I continue to air this up, that edge of that tire is going to go boop. Sometimes it's really loud and aggressive, and sometimes it just goes boop. There we go. There you go. <laughs> And we are at 11 PSI. And that is probably the most air these are ever going to have in it. I'm about halfway done right now. There's five tires. This is the third one and it's almost done. I'm going to try to bang these out really fast so that we can get started working on the truck. I'm really excited to get that motor pulled out. There it goes. For those of you guys that don't know, bead lock rims allow you to lower the pressure in your tires down to three or five or 10 PSI without the tire falling off of the rim. And that's accomplished because this ring right here being bolted down with those bolts pinches the bead so that no matter how much pressure you put on it, that outside bead can't pop off of the rim and lose all of the air in the tire. Lowering your pressures that low allows the tire to kind of flatten out and conform to rocks and sticks and stumps and dips and all different types of things so that you can get maximum traction. That's why I'm going through all of this trouble. final two laps around the bolts with the torque wrench. I'm gonna throw this up on here, air it up, and the tires are gonna be done. Pretty solid, shouldn't fall over on anybody or anything. Now that we're done with that, get these boxes out of the way. We're gonna start taking the serpentine belt off of the front of this Toyota motor. That way I can actually remove the AC compressor. There's this one little sensor and it's actually a crank positioning sensor and it's underneath the AC compressor. I thought I could disconnect everything, pull the engine and the trans with all the accessories mounted on it without taking the serpentine belt off. That is not the case. I have to remove the AC compressor, which means I have to take off the belt just to get this one little electrical clip. But then we can actually pull the motor. This is the tensioner, so I'm gonna take the tension off of that, slide the belt off. But before I do that, I'm gonna take a short little video of everything that I see <laughs> right now so that when I go to reassemble this, I'm not like, hey, wait, how did the belt or which pulley went and these like four pulleys look interchangeable, but they're like all different, so. I don't want to mix them up, so I'm going to take a short little video to give myself something to remember it all by. I did smell what smelled like something sweet out of the exhaust, so I am suspicious that there's like a head gasket that's blown. It has like 215,000 miles on it, so if I'm going to do a head gasket because I'm suspicious of that, I may as well tear it down and redo everything. So I'm probably just going to have the heads remanufactured. I think I'm going to have the transmission uh, rebuilt. I'm going to rebuild the motor. 
and then I'm gonna supercharge it in the end and hopefully it'll be a brand new seamless engine. The only thing I'm concerned about is the last time that I rebuilt an engine, they hadn't even invented the iPhone yet. <laughs> so it's been a while. All right, so we are ready here. I'm gonna have Brandon start lifting this up. I'm gonna try and pull the shaft out of the way. This is a really exciting moment. The first time the cab is like, I mean, we lifted it up a little bit last time, so it's not actually bolted on or touching right now, but there might be some stuff connecting it. So we're gonna lift it up and try and get it completely separated. It's a big moment of truth right now. So uh, go ahead and just tap it a little bit. All right, so we've got the cab completely supported on the lift. It's lifted up. It's not attached to anything up front in the motor or anything like that. The only thing that it is attached to, like why do they do this? There's like a passenger side wiring harness and a driver's side wiring harness. That's the passenger side. This is the driver's side. And then they had them attached by that little plastic clip. Just let them be separate. Don't make me have to go and find that clip. Anyway, the only thing that's still connected to the frame is the fuel pump and the fuel pump sending unit uh, plug right here. It hurts my fingers. So there's basically like a little plastic clip and you pinch the back of it and it lifts a little tab on the bottom and pinching as hard as I can with my fingers on the tab is not lifting the little like release far enough to get the plug to come off. So I need like a little hook to get in there to persuade it. Your dental tool? One of my dental tools, yeah. That's exactly what it is. It's really funny, actually. This is the tab right here that I'm pushing on, and the little clip that's down there doesn't want to come off. Now, if I were myself 20 years ago, I would literally just like put something on there and pry that thing off and break it, and then have to like buy a new clip. Or I would just try and put it back on later without the clip intact. <laughs> Most of the time that works, but it's not the way you should do it. So having the right tools, my handy little dentistry tool, <laughs> This actually came in a set of like 10 pieces and this is the only one that I ever use, but um, basically I can push down on this clip right here Don't and then try and get the hook underneath the tab like that. Ugh. Success. All right, dude. Things are getting interesting here. Go ahead and raise it up. In case you were unaware, this is what a car or most trucks look like underneath the body. So you have your two frame rails here. The frame is what supports your transmission. The transfer case used to be here and the engine. The engine drives the transmission. The transmission turns the power from the engine into different speeds so that you can go from slow to fast speeds. The transfer case is that piece Brandon and I took out a couple episodes ago and it actually changes from front four wheel drive to two wheel drive and has a gear reduction to give you more power at low speeds. But uh, yeah, we're about ready to get this motor out of here. <laughs> Back in 20 minutes. <laughs> bolts out everything's free these chains have got some severe tension on them I think the motor mounts are free it should just be those two bolts we're about to find out oh she's a rocking well, did you see that yeah that's not good it's not no it's just picking up the transmission all the weights up here dang it 100% not the right way to do this. So where I have the motor supported here at the back, 
there's way too much weight in the front and not enough weight in the back, even though the transmission is over here. I thought it was gonna kind of balance it out. So I'm gonna put this tie down strap around a support here on the front, and then I'm gonna hook the other end of it to our cherry picker right here. And then by tensioning this, it should counterbalance and hopefully pull the front of the motor up. Now I'm not a physicist, so this may or may not work, but I think by ratcheting these two points together, it'll help counterbalance. It looks like an alien. Looks like an alien? Yeah. Well, it's not, it's a Toyota. <laughs> <laughs> now that we have the back of the frame supported, I just, I already know, it's completely free. Play in. Not hanging on our strap or anything. This is exciting! <laughs> All right, well, I am super amped that we got the motor pulled, we got the trans out, it's supported on the cherry picker. I actually have an engine stand that I think I'm gonna assemble and put the engine on it before the end of the day, but I think this is where we're gonna wrap up today's video. I know a lot of you guys have been asking for longer videos and I will get to it, I promise, but right now, this is just the most that we can do. So I wanted to thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you show me by giving a big thumbs up on today's video. Make sure you leave a comment letting me know what you guys liked, what you guys didn't like. I love hearing your guys' feedback, and I will see you guys on the next one.